Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skarim Zimik. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 13th of May. India law to pay 3 trillion for collateral free automatic loan for businesses. Pakistani nurses demand better working conditions amid corona crisis. And U.S. condemns terror attacks in Afghanistan, urges punishment for perpetrators. And now for all the details, India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Wednesday announced Rs. 3 trillion collateral free automatic loans for businesses, including micro, small and medium enterprises. The announcement came a day after Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced a 266 billion US dollars special economic package amid nationwide COVID-19 lockdown. Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Wednesday gave details of a 20 trillion rupees or 266 billion dollars economic package to support an economy battered by a weeks long lockdown to contain the coronavirus pandemic. Speaking at a press conference in capital New Delhi a day after Indian Prime Minister announced the economic package, Sitaraman announced Rs 3 lakh crore collateral free automatic loans for businesses, including MSMEs. Besides this, she said that to provide stressed MSMEs with equity support, the government will facilitate the provision of Rs 20,000 crore as subordinate debt. There is a collateral free automatic loan for MSMEs which is being provided. This will give facility up to 3 lakh crores. 25 crore outstanding for those MSME units for whom 25 crore is the outstanding loan or 100 crores whose turnover is will benefit from this. In an address to the nation on Tuesday, Prime Minister Modi said the stimulus was equivalent to 10% of India's gross domestic product and was aimed at the multitudes out of work and businesses reeling under ongoing shutdown. As per government's latest data, India's total number of coronavirus cases has reached 74,281. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar participated in the virtual meeting of Foreign Minister of Shanghai Cooperation Organization or SEO member countries on Wednesday to discuss cooperation to fight the coronavirus pandemic. The foreign ministers and diplomats attending the meeting from eight different countries held discussions on anniversary of ending of World War II situation in Afghanistan and future SEO activities. The conference was held under the chairmanship of Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. In news from Pakistan, members of the St. Young Nurses Association in Pakistan boycotted work at hospitals and held a protest on Tuesday demanding better working conditions in the time of coronavirus pandemic. The protesters claim that although the nurses are putting their lives at risk due to COVID-19, the authorities deny them health professional allowances. Members of Pakistan's Sindh Young Nurses Association or SYNA on the occasion of International Nurses Day boycotted work at hospitals and staged a protest outside the Karachi Press Club demanding better working conditions amid the coronavirus pandemic. The protesters on Tuesday claimed that although the nurses in the Sindh province had been putting their lives at risk due to COVID-19, the provincial health department continued to deny them coronavirus risk allowances or health professional allowances. A spokesperson for SYNA, Saeed Shahid Iqbal, said that whenever the nurses raised their voices for their rights, they were transferred to a different hospital. 
हमें तो सबसे ज़्यादा इनको अप्रिशिएट करना चाहिए मगर हम इसके बावजूद भी सिंध गवर्नमेंट की इस नाहली को छुपा रहे हैं कि हम तमाम सामान ना होने के बावजूद भी अपने का, अपने काम को जारी वारी रखे हुए हैं मगर अब सिंध गवर्नमेंट की जो हम इस बेसी को बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकते और अब हम मजबूर होकर हमने अपने एहतजाज का रास्ता अख्तियार किया है Nosa said they would continue to protest for their demands which include the implementation of a service structure provision of a personal protective equipment and an end to unjust transfers Pakistan has so far reported over 34000 cases of the corona virus out of which around 12600 are from Sindh alone Moving on Pakistan's recent move to hold elections in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan has received flag from human rights activists terming the move as illegal Kashmiri activist Amjad Ayub Mirza said Pakistan wants to install hand-picked government in the region The people of illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan face a new challenge as Pakistan is conspiring to include the region into its federation by making her its fifth province. Human rights activists have termed Pakistan's move to hold elections as illegal and unconstitutional while urging people to boycott it. Kashmiri activist Amjad Ayub Mirza also termed the move as illegal and said Pakistan wants to install hand-picked government in the region. Pakistan has decided to hold an illegal election in Gilgit Baltistan is illegal because they are going to use uh, their own order 2019 to conduct such an election and have their own uh, hand picked government installed in Gilgit Baltistan and the purpose for that is to include Gilgit Baltistan in uh, Pakistan as its fifth province Gilgit Baltistan home to some of the most captivating natural sceneries on earth and its serene landscape is a tourist hotspot. Mirza said the earnings from the exploitation of the human and natural resources collected by the federal government end up in the pockets of Pakistani military establishment. Mirza was of the opinion that if the illegal election in Gilgit Baltistan happens then the Indus River which runs through Gilgit Baltistan before it enters into Pakistan is going to see one of the worst kind of riots Gilgit Baltistan has ever seen. The United States has strongly condemned the two horrific terrorist attacks in Afghanistan on Tuesday saying attack infants and women in labor is an act of sheer evil. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has also called on the Taliban and the Afghan government to cooperate to bring perpetrators to justice. The United States has condemned the heinous terrorist attacks in Afghanistan on Tuesday, calling the Taliban and the Afghan government to cooperate to bring the perpetrators to justice. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in a statement on the maternity clinic attack said any attack on innocents is unforgivable but to attack infants and women in labor in the sanctuary of a hospital is an act of sheer evil Pompeo also mentioned the attack in Afghanistan's eastern Nangarhar province which occurred on same day saying terrorists who attacked mourners lining up for prayer at a funeral are only seeking to tear apart the bonds that hold families and communities together but they will never succeed <laughs> meanwhile in light of the brutal attacks on tuesday afghan president ashraf ghani ordered the military to move to offensive mode away from a defensive stance it had taken as part of efforts to reduce violence in the war ravaged nation as washington tries to broker peace talks with the taliban The attack killed 16 people at the maternity clinic in Kabul and more than 20 died at the funeral in eastern Afghanistan. No group including the Taliban has so far claimed responsibility for the attacks. Nurses are at the forefront of fighting epidemics and pandemics and are working relentlessly amid the coronavirus crisis as the world pay tribute to the relentless warriors. Sri Lanka mark International Nurses Day with ceremony at Buddhist temple. 
Sri Lanka marked the International Nurses Day on Tuesday with a ceremony at a Buddhist temple in capital Colombo attended by government officials and nurses. During the ceremony, nurses belonging to the largest nurses union in Sri Lanka laid flowers at a statue of Florence Nightingale. Sri Lanka's Health Ministry Secretary Major General Sanjeeva Munasinghe also laid flowers at a Buddhist statue at the ceremony. Tetapi ni rantai ini memang wasangga tehati unat, no unat, hadian ge kriya kari itu esemai. Hamada amat mem kriya kari itu seve kerana kanda emak tamai sauke kari manle kian ni. Namut kisim vidya king, khusus khusus ing janda prasad yang balapurut tu nuwe na adum taraming suapat telaya na rogi inging istuti yang pawa balapurut tu nuwe na nihat mani seve emak tamai hadis seva watulin sidwe ni. International Nurses Day is observed around the world on May 12, birth of Florence Nightingale to mark the contributions that nurses make to the society. Emai, api itu puluhan tarang, api rohalin sapai nama, ikan ini raja ing api itu sapai nama. Namun hidup-hidupan wajib, api itu meva ne, me arawa ne, kira pini ne. Api itu puluhan ini dia, api itu lebih ne sampat teling, api wan ipo dek wagan nama. Gudak kelawat orang gula dek lete hidupan ne kira ne kagudak kira nama adui. Hidupan eva ta awash, thawa wena monawa hari yudaga teh kira eva. Yudaga ni mene upakaran sah, ikan ini mask par, awash endu eva pilih lekar. Sri Lanka has had 889 confirmed COVID-19 cases, including 514 active cases and 9 deaths since the start of the pandemic. The country is currently in the midst of loosening restrictions after a lockdown that started in mid-March. Buddhist monks from Laos gathered in eastern India recently to offer special prayers for the eradication of the deadly coronavirus. They chanted prayers and hoped God to fulfill the prayers and prevent the deadly disease from spreading. Buddhist monks from Laos gathered in India's eastern Bodh Gaya city to offer special prayers for relief from coronavirus recently. The monks chanted prayers at a Buddha temple in Laos Buddhist monastery as they hoped God to fulfill the prayers and prevent the deadly disease from spreading. Today we have uh, chanting in Wat La Bukaya International Bukaya. Normally we have uh, out duty. Every day we have morning chanting and evening chanting. But uh, every time and now there's the situation like a coronavirus, uh, this time we have like a special chanting also. Originated from China's Wuhan city earlier this year, the COVID-19 outbreak has been causing considerable human suffering. It so far killed over 290,000 people around the world. Amid nationwide lockdown imposed to control the spread of coronavirus, a village in India's northern Budgam district has come to aid of other districts of Jammu and Kashmir territory as it is providing vegetables. India's northern Bagam village of Badgaon district has come to the aid of other districts of Jammu and Kashmir territory as it is providing vegetables during lockdown imposed to control the spread of coronavirus. Vegetable growers said due to the spread of coronavirus, locals were opting for vegetables grown in the territory, so they were supplying not only in the region but also outside Kashmir. The people of the government are preparing for their local vegetables. और इसके वजह से हम पूरे रियासत को रियासत के बाहर रियासत से बाहर भी बेचते हैं डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करते हैं सब्जी जम्मू एंड कश्मीर डिपेंडेंट ऑन अदर प्रोविंस फॉर सप्लाई ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स इज नॉट रिसीविंग एज मच सप्लाई एज इट यूज टू प्रायर टू द लॉकडाउन सो बगम हैज एमर्ज एज अ वेजिटेबल प्रोड्यूसर हालात यह है कि लॉकडाउन की वजह से जो बाहर की सब्जियाँ हैं उसमें हम लोग को मतलब ये दिखाई देता है कि प्रॉब्लम आ रही है कि बीमारी फैली हुई है तो अभी हम लोग यहाँ की जो सप्लाई है ना अपनी वो हम पूर, पूरी सप्लाई करेंगे अपनी डिस्ट्रिक्ट में जो प्रेफर है अच्छी है और ऑर्गेनिक से भी है कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है तो बुगाम इसमें बहुत सी मतलब सप्लायर है बहुत ज़्यादा सप्लाई करता है ओवरऑल हर डिस्ट्रिक्ट में हो जाती है कॉल्ड एस छोटा पंजाब बाई लोकल गिवन इट्स वेजिटेबल प्रोडक्शन बगम नाउ प्रोड्यूस वेजिटेबल्स टू मीट पीपल्स नीड 
According to the statistics at Kashmir's Department of Agriculture, Badgaon district is the largest vegetable producer in Kashmir. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.